So I would invite uh, Professor Heng Schroeder, who is MD PhD from University of Amsterdam, and he's a trained by gynecologist. And then he had a PhD training in minimal invasive surgery, and he had plenty of publication. And the leading one is co-authoring as one of the co-PI of OV Hypectral published in NEJM. And his area of interest is training and learning in robotics and HIPEC. And he has done excellent work and a great friend of India who visits India to train our HIPEC people. And he has done a lot of joint SO and Indian Society meet. Over to you, Hank. Welcome. And thank you for accepting our invitation. And please go ahead. Well, thank you, uh, Somu. Well, thank you, Professor Somo Shekhar, for this uh, kind introduction. This is really a global uh, initiative. And uh, I, first of all, would like to thank the organization to giving uh, our Dutch group uh, the opportunity uh, to present this and to also to join with the French for the PIPEC part. I think we have a very interesting program for this, uh, this afternoon. Um, the first talk, I will talk about the HIPEC uh, one trial. And um, this talk is also a uh, part of Willemine van Drill's work, who is the principal investigator from the um, Dutch Cancer Institute in Amsterdam. She's a gynae oncologist there. She will talk later in this uh, masterclass, but she was also the, is the principal investigator of the OVPEC one trial. Um, I don't have any conflicts of interest, no financial disclosures to make, and the OVPEC study was partly funded by the Dutch Cancer Society. Um, when you look at the Netherlands, we're a tiny country somewhere in the north part of the global world, and if you compare it to India, we're quite small. India is almost 80 times bigger and has almost 80 times more citizens. However, there is something weird. If we look at the citizens per square kilometer, you can see that the Netherlands is even more crowded than India. And that is what some people, well, probably don't realize. And I didn't realize before I looked up those figures. So this joint venture of India and, um, and us is, uh, is, is, is nice. And I would also like to thank the Indian Society of Peritoneal Surface Malignancies and the Association of Gyne of India to, uh, yeah, to, to make this afternoon possible. I will shortly go to the rationale of HIPEC, but then a focus on the OVPEC-1 trial. And um, then after this, uh, the other speakers will join and we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the five presentations, because uh, probably a lot of questions which will be answered during one of the presentations, because there will be perhaps some overlap and we, uh, we all address other aspects of this issue. So um, I think if we combine everything, we'll have a, quite a good view of um, the high pack for ovarian cancer at the moment. When we look at the rationale for ovarian cancer, high pack, um, we go back to the early 90s, early to, 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 to 2000, when high pack was introduced for a treatment of metastatic colon cancer. And there was actually a um, surgeon at the um, Dutch Cancer Institute who worked closely together with Dr. Van Driel, who was doing research on the field of colon uh, HIPEC. And um, he was together with Dr. Van Driel um, on the basis of this, this trial. And they worked uh, very hard to make this trial starting at that time in the 2007. And they thought, well, a high concentration of chemotherapy at the peritoneal surface that should work or could do something in patients with uh, metastatic peritoneal surface disease. And it could make sense if you address this uh, directly after surgery, because then you have less adhesions or even no adhesions at that time, because all the adhesion, adhesions will be uh, released just after the surgery. So the HIPEC has the great. Uh, possibility to um, reach every space in the abdomen. And if you add some hypothermia to it, you uh, can erase the effect of the chemotherapy. 
and you can have a direct toxic effect of hypothermia on the tumor cells because the hypothermia induces heat shock proteins and will serve as a receptor for natural killer cells, but also induces a transition to HRD deficiency and in this way increase the sensitivity for platinum-based chemotherapy. Next to that, it stimulates the penetration of chemotherapy in the tissue because of the heat. And um, we already knew that time that uh, the IP chemotherapy can improve recurrent free and over overall survival after primary debulking. We knew that from the Armstrong trial. So that was at the start of the OVPAC trial. It was January 2018 when the trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, Dr. Van Drill as first author and principal investigator. The trial was uh, done in eight hospitals in the Netherlands. There were all cancer centers who are already uh, performing high pack procedures for colorectal cancer. And they worked closely together to uh, complete the inclusion of the uh, OVPEC-1 trial. When you look at the study design, it was a randomized multi-center open label phase three trial. And the patients uh, were FIGO stage three epithelial ovarian cancer patients. And the patients had to be ineligible for primary cytoreductive surgery because of the extent of the disease. So that was usually uh, decided on a multidisciplinary tumor board meeting. And from that on, the people were scheduled for um, three cycles of carboplatin and paclitaxel. And after two cycles, there was a response evaluation uh, done by CT and laboratory. And then if there was a stable disease or a response, they were scheduled for the interval cytoreductive surgery. And then 245 patients were finally randomized uh, for this study, one-to-one, um, -one, and they were randomized at the moment of surgery. So we opened up the abdomen, we checked the whole abdomen, decided the PCI score, and we decided if we can devoke this patient complete or optimal. If that was the case, then on the OR, the randomization was done and uh, we were randomized if they, we should add the high pack or not at that time. After the surgery and the high pack, um, patients got all three cycles of carboplatin and paclitaxel again to complete their treatment. Then we had primary endpoints, we had recurrence-free survival and secondary endpoints, overall survival, safety and quality of life. Follow-up visits were performed every three months for the first two years. And then every six months thereafter, with routinely uh, CA125 was measured. And also at some stage, tumor um, uh, CT scans were done and they were performed at 26, 52 and 104 weeks after the last chemotherapy. And also we used the CTC grading uh, system for grading the toxicity of the treatment. The technique of HIPEC we used was the open technique um, and it was directly following the interval cytoreductive surgery. Um, we, uh, we used the, the three inflow drains and we used two outflow drains for continuous circulation and we used cisplatinum 100 milligrams per square meter. The temperature was kept between 40 and 41 degrees and we used sodium thiosulfate to protect the renal function. Perfusion was always exactly 90 minutes done. So this is how it looks like um, on the OR. Um, we built in the retractor, we built a, a like a Colosseum. We lift the abdominal wall and then we fill the abdomen with fluid using three inflow and two outflow drains. We use temperature measurement in every quadrant of the abdomen. And then we cover the, um, the Colosseum during the, um, during the perfusion to reduce the loss of, the, of heat. The patient inclusion took about nine years, uh, which was a long time and it was longer than expected. 
um, as I just said, we randomized during the procedure. And um, one of the reasons that it took um, some time to, um, to the for the recruitment was that there was no financial reimbursement for the HIPEC procedure at that time. So there was no insurance paying for it. And the hospitals uh, who participated paid the uh, treatment themselves. And some hospitals had a restrict amount of uh, procedures a year. So it took longer than we expected, but we completed to fill the study. When you look at the baseline characteristics, uh, there was uh, no big difference between the both groups. Um, with respect to age, histology, the order of treatment, primary chemotherapy or septuplicitimal debulking, but also for the numbers of regions affected at start of the cytoreductive reductive surgery, which were similar in both groups. When we look at the surgical results, we see uh, we reached almost 70% complete debulking and uh, all the surgeries were done together. Uh, the gynae oncologist and the surgical oncologist worked closely together in all these patients. And if you uh, add the uh, millimary, miliary disease, we still re we reach almost 90%. When we look up the post-operative characteristics of the patients, uh, we see that the operation was longer. That's for sure. We use, we, you lose two hours, one 90 minutes for uh, the perfusion and half an hour breaking up and setting up the system. And then um, there was an admission for the ICU that was protocolized. So all the patients had to be admitted for one day at the recovery or at the ICU that was uh, written in the protocol for extra um, uh, monitoring. And then the overall total admission time was added in was two days longer than the cytoreductive surgery without a high pack. The restart of chemotherapy after the surgery was no different. And also the schedule afterwards, there was no difference. When we look at the toxicity, according to uh, the grading system, then um, we were surprised what we see, didn't see any significant difference. There was uh, an even diff distribution in both arms uh, between uh, the cytoreductive group and the HIPAC group. And also, if you look at the um, grade three and grade four toxicity, you can see that uh, the different um, toxicities that there was no different, significant difference between the groups. Also for the quality of life, um, there was no difference between both groups, not even not after the surgery directly, but also not after completing the treatment, but not after a few months, there was still no difference between both groups. We found a difference, however, in uh, the formation of colostomies. Um, when you look at both groups below, you see that the rate of bowel resections in both groups were the same. In both groups, there was 24% of bowel resection. Um, however, if you look at the stoma formation, you see that there was 72% of the bowel resections patients got a colostomy in the HIPAC group and 43% in the uh, non-HIPAC group. So um, perhaps the surgeons, the, we decided a bit to be a bit more careful and make yeah a bit easier a colostomy in the high pack group because another explanation we really don't have at the moment then at the end if you look at the progression free and overall survival you see a gain for the high pack group in the progression free survival of 3.5 months and um, for the overall survival, you see a gain of 12 months. So um, the data are also consistent uh, for the predefined stratification factors like the one of the eight institutes, the previous surgery, or the number of uh, involved abdominal regions. So in conclusion, um, we found that for patients with FIGO stage three epithelial ovarian cancer, treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, 
adding HIPEC to interval cytoreductive surgery prolongs the progression-free survival with 3.5 months and the overall survival with 12 months. And this without adding a significant difference in toxicity or quality of life. So that was very interesting. And we in the Netherlands, we decided uh, this to make this possible for our patient. And our next speaker uh, will talk about this issue. That's Ruby von Stein, uh, because we decided to implement this treatment for all our patients. And we implemented at one stage on 1st of March in 2019 in all centers at once. And we arranged that it was reimbursed now by the insurance companies. So all people in the Netherlands have the availability to receive this treatment. We would like to thank all patients and their families and all participants, doctors, nurses, and everything. And we would like to thank you for your attention. As said before, we will raise the questions at the end of the presentations because um, the other presentations will add, add up to this. And at the end, a lot of questions probably were already addressed during all the other presentations. Well, thank you for now. And we speak to each other later today. Thank you very much, Hank. And that's a fantastic presentation. We all know that uh, this trial actually changed everything in the world. Uh, I just remember uh, I used to go to Canadian Society of Gyne Anko and all they used to ask me was robotic. Once you, your team, everybody presented this, when I went to give an oration there, all they were asking is HIPEC. And this particular trial made the uh, NCCN actually recommend and cropped into their uh, recommendation. And this changed everything. 